yesterday you guys had to watch a tutorial that I put on Moodle which talked about the definition of a fragment. And we talked about how a sentence, in order for it to be complete or to even be considered a sentence, must have a subject, a verb, and it must express a complete thought. Today we're going to go a little bit more in depth by looking at different types of fragments. And so we're going to look at examples of fragments that are commonly used by writers of the English language, and then we're going to talk about how to fix them. It's important for you guys to become your own editor, and you need to look more carefully at your work because not, you're not always going to have somebody there to do it for you. And you want to become an intelligent writer, one who self-edits. So. Let's look at phrase fragments. A phrase is a group of words that does not have a subject and a verb. Clause, on the other hand, we've talked before about independent and dependent clauses. Those groups of words do have subjects and verbs. Phrase, however, is missing either the subject or the verb. And so, of course, then, a phrase is going to be a fragment. So let's say one day this young man walks into our classroom opens the door and he says this for several good reasons and then he leaves. Well, you and I would wonder what in the world did he mean for several good reasons? Obviously that's a fragment. It's not a complete thought. It's a phrase fragment. And if you were in class right now, I would say what kind of phrase is for several good reasons? And hopefully you would know that's a prepositional phrase for being the preposition, reasons being the object of the preposition, and then several good are two adjectives which are modifying reasons and making them more specific. So of course, we would need the young man to come back in and give, it, give us that missing information so we wouldn't have a phrase fragment. For example, he might say, for several good reasons, comma, I am going to skip your class today, Mrs. Workman. And of course, there in my mind, there's never, never a good reason to skip class. All right, let's go on to look at the different kinds of phrases that are often mistaken for sentences in our English language. The first type is called a verbal phrase. Look at this one, studying deserts. That word study is a verb, obviously, but if we add ing to it and then add it in front of the word deserts, it becomes a verbal phrase. It's missing something. It's not a complete thought. It's a fragment. Another type of phrase that is often confused and often looked at as a complete sentence by writers is in a positive phrase, a strange rock formation. Well, that has a subject, but where's the verb? And where's the complete thought? And then finally, prepositional phrases like we mentioned on the previous slide with the boy coming in saying for several good reasons. Here's another one, of volcanic rock, of being the preposition, rock being the object of the preposition, volcanic being the adjective that tells us more specifically what kind of rock. So these three types of phrases are often confused as complete sentences. We're going to look at each one in a little bit more depth, first starting with verbal phrases. So you might think, what is a verbal? Well, in grammar, a verbal is a word that is formed from a verb, hence the verb at the beginning of verbal, or the word verb at the beginning of verbal but it's used as another part of speech, so it's not acting as a verb in the sentence. So if we take that verb study, we add ing to the end of it, we have what is called a verbal that we then connect with the noun deserts, and we have a verbal phrase. And again, studying deserts by itself would be a fragment. Here's another example. We take the verb fold, this time we add ed to the end instead of ing and we say folded in two. Again, that's a fragment. It's not a complete thought. We're missing something. You know, what was folded in two? That subject would have to be filled in. C, this time we're gonna add that little word to in front of the verb C, that's called an infinitive, to see clearly. Again, it's missing something. You might say something like this, to see clearly while driving is a goal of is the goal of every motorist and then we would have a complete thought all right a positive a positive is a word that identifies a nearby noun or pronoun so let's say we have this sentence this material is strong and of course that is a complete thought subject um, material verb is so it's not a fragment 
okay? In the middle though, we're gonna add this appositive. The appositive steel identifies material. It renames it, so to speak. So an appositive phrase consists of its appositive and its modifiers. So we could take steel again, and this time put the adjectives highly tempered, and then it would be used to modify material. But if we had highly tempered steel by itself, of course that would be a fragment. Moving on to prepositional phrases, which you guys already know about. Of course, a prepositional phrase contains the preposition, in this case above, the object of the preposition, in this case buildings, and then sometimes we have modifiers in between. For example, above the towering office buildings. Okay, so those are the three types of phrases that are often mistake, mistaken as complete thoughts. So verbal phrases, positive phrases, prepositional phrases. So now we wanna talk about how to fix those fragments when we see them in writing, either in our own writing or in a fellow classmate's writing or a friend's writing. So there are two ways to fix these phrase fragments. First of all, add words to form a complete sentence. So if we had studying deserts, let's add something to it to make it a complete sentence. I enjoy studying deserts. So we add the pronoun I as the subject and then enjoy as the verb before that verbal phrase. A positive phrase, a strange rock formation. Instead, let's say we saw Devil's Tower, Devil's Tower, a strange rock formation, put a comma there after Devil's Tower, a strange rock formation renames or points to Devil's Tower. It tells us something more about Devil's Tower. Prepositional phrases of volcanic rock. Again, it's a fragment. Instead, let's say this, Devil's Tower is made of volcanic rock. So again, strategy one, add words to the phrase to make it a complete sentence. The second strategy is to combine it with another sentence. So we have, we have spent two weeks period studying deserts as the fragment. Instead, let's say we have spent two weeks studying deserts. A positive phrase, we saw Devil's Tower. Fragment, a strange rock formation. Now we're gonna separate that Devil's Tower with a comma from the appositive, a strange rock formation. Prepositional phrases. Devil's Tower is a giant column of volcanic rock. Again, we have a fragment here, so now we're just gonna combine it with the first sentence to make it a complete thought. Now, the other type of fragment that is often seen in the English language besides phrase fragments is the subordinate clause fragment. I mentioned a clause a few moments ago. Clause, unlike a phrase, does have a subject and a verb. But a subordinate clause fragment or a dependent clause fragment suggests questions that they do not answer. So for example, if someone says this, when he realized his mistake, period, we have a fragment. Yes, we have a subject, he. We have a verb realized. But that word when at the beginning is a subordinating conjunction, and it means that we need to have a, a de, an independent clause following it to make it a complete sentence. So we ask ourselves this, what happened when he realized his mistake? Here, here's another one, who accepted responsibility? We're missing something. Another one, because he was just learning. Well, what happened because he was just learning? All of these are subordinate clause fragments. So here are some strategies. We have Grammar Guy, we saw him on the previous tutorial. When a sentence begins with because, it must have two parts. Because the recruit was just learning, the sergeant forgave him. Don't ever have a sentence that starts with because, have the clause after it and put period. You need to have a comma and then the independent clause that finishes it. Because the recruit was just learning comma, now we have our independent clause to finish it up. The sergeant forgave him, period. Now we have a complete sentence. Okay, two strategies here just like we saw for um, phrase fragments. First of all, add words to form a complete sentence. Who accepted responsibility? Complete sentence. I admire the man who accepted responsibility. Strategy two, like before, combine it with another sentence. Since he was just learning, the sergeant forgave him. And again, we need a comma. The rule is when you have a dependent clause first that starts with that subordinating conjunction, again, you're gonna put a comma before the independent clause comes. And that's what this slide is telling us here. 
Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit tricky because in English, when you have the independent clause first, like this example, you do not have a comma. I would not put a comma after recruit. The sergeant forgave the recruit since he was just learning. And I see this mistake a lot in your writing. You put a comma before that dependent clause if it comes at the end and that comma is not necessary. That, that mistake oftentimes happens when you have the word because. So if you had the sergeant forgave the recruit because he was just learning, do not put a comma before because. However, when you switch it and you have the dependent one first and then the independent, you have to separate a comma from the independent clause that we know how to, how to make this a complete sentence. All right, what I would like you guys to do now is to do the short little exercise I have beneath um, this tutorial and we will talk about this more a little bit tomorrow in our bell work.